There you go. Thanks. Have you found the truth, Dad? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. What is going on, brothers and sisters? It's Daniel here. We're back here again today, alhamdulillah, and we have Dad joining us for a good video. I'm excited about this one. This is a video that is titled, Why Islam is the Truth. Okay. A bold claim, but believe it or not, he actually does a pretty good job here. It's a good delivery, kind of breaks it down, very logical, very rational. So, and I believe it's... It's, it's English. It's in English, yeah, and it okay. really does prove why Islam is the truth. Okay. I think if you, if you watch it with an open mind, you'll see. So let's see. Let's do it. forms of truth. What do you mean different form of truth? Well, you have a rational form, you have a way of proving with uh, different arguments. Maybe rational is one of them. Yeah, so this, the, on YouTube, you can see this video is like split up into sections. So like, like, what is Islam? So Islam is like believing in, in God. It's also believing in the Quran and believing in, in, in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So he kind of, he kind of has like, prove all these things. So I think he starts first with why there needs to be a God. Huh? Why why it makes sense rationally that there is a God. Even though, you know, like I told you already, we I know you already believe in God, but still it's it's a good video to it's a good video to watch. He he kind of he breaks it down in a in a unique way. Okay, yeah. Forms so he already a good said, argument. He already, yeah, he forms a good argument. By going through five important steps, we should arrive at the... He's probably going to read this off. Yeah, no. No. We'll arrive at the rational conclusion that Islam is the true purpose of our existence and is the most in line with human nature. Of any other religion, I'm assuming. I'm going to throw yeah. that on. Yeah. That's what he means. Any other okay. way of living, any religion. No. I like that he mentioned most in line with human nature because this is what... I realized kind of early on when I was learning about Islam, everything I learned about Islam, I'm like, that is, li that lines up with the way I feel already. Even it's like maybe something that's like kind of uncomfortable or difficult to do, but it, like in deep down, I knew that it's actually like a good thing to mm -hmm. do. We all have that in Islam. It's called the fitra, like the human, the human nature. So we want to al align with, with our human nature. We were just talking about this, that it's innate to be yeah. born to love your parents. Right, exactly. Yep. It's like there's certain things we all know are good. Right. We want to align with those. Consider this beautiful painting of nature. If I told you that some ink randomly fell onto the paper and made it by chance, how crazy would you think I was? You would instantly deny this and tell me that a painter designed it. If something like a painting must have a designer, how about something far more complex like the universe? Just like the painter used different colours and techniques to draw the painting, the universe is also finely tuned to perfection by many fundamentals. If the painter made a small mistake, it would ruin the painting. Similarly, if the fine tuning of the universe were to change even by the smallest amount, it would no longer exist. Just like it is almost impossible to accidentally produce this painting, the odds are almost infinitely more impossible for the universe to accidentally come into existence. Allah challenges our intellect in a profound verse in the Quran. He says, Were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Firstly, Allah asks, were they created by nothing? 
If you think about it, you will quickly realize that this is impossible as you cannot create something from nothing. Now apply this logic to the universe as a whole. Then Allah asks, well, were they That's decreased? what a lot of atheists say too. It's like, well, it came from nothing, which makes absolutely no sense. There's a really funny comedy clip I saw recently, and I wish I remember the name of the comedian, but he pointed out how silly that is to say. He, he said like, it's, it's amazing how the people that believe that we all come from nothing make fun of the people that, that say that we come from God, because those people that believe we come from nothing say, well, God doesn't exist. But what we all know for sure is that nothing doesn't exist. That's the definition of nothing. <laughs> so they say we come from nothing. Well, nothing doesn't exist. And then they say, well, God doesn't exist. So we, we can't come from God because God doesn't exist. But they themselves say we come from nothing, mm. which doesn't exist. It's nothing. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's hilariously uh, contradictory and they don't realize it. The flaw in their argument. Right. <laughs> So were they the creators of themselves? themselves. <clears throat> For you to create yourself, you have to already exist before you were born to create yourself, which is also impossible. Now apply the same logic to the universe. <clears throat> Since the universe has a beginning, it could not have created itself. Finally, Allah concludes by saying, or were they the creators of the heavens and the earth? Two points. Firstly, the universe existed billions of years before us, and to create something that existed before we were even born is impossible. Secondly, the universe is far, far greater than us. Look at the most impressive human inventions and you'll find that they're nothing compared to even a fly. Human creation is always prone to mistakes and needs teams of maintenance and support in case of breakages or errors. If something as trivial as software needs maintenance, who then is maintaining the universe? From this verse alone, Allah shows us that we could not have come from nothing, we could not have created ourselves, and we cannot create anything as incredible as the universe. So how then do we think we are intelligent enough to deny the existence of a creator? Okay, you might now be thinking, if God created the universe, who created God? Firstly, to say that God has a beginning or is created by definition means this being can no longer be a God. But for argument's sake, let's say that the universe was created by something that is created. The next logical question is, what created that thing? And you can ask that question again and again an infinite amount of times and the only way to break this chain is to say that creation was created by an uncreated creator. Secondly, time is a property of the universe. Since the universe has a beginning, we use time to describe what happened from that point. Since Allah is the creator of the universe and time, it does not mean he is restricted by these laws. Hopefully, we should arrive at the rational conclusion that the universe is created and maintained by an uncreated creator. You follow? Oh, easily. <clears throat> Generally, there's one person in charge. There's one captain of a ship and one king of a country. Imagine you're driving a car and both you and the person next to you have a steering wheel. Either you agree which way to turn, which shows you are both dependent on each other, or you try and turn left and the other tries turning right and one of you overpowers the other. Now apply this logic to God. If there was more than one God, then these gods cannot be all powerful for the same reasons. And a God that is not all powerful, by definition, cannot be a God. Just imagine if there were two kings running a country. There would be chaos. And amazingly, Allah directly addresses this in the Quran. He says, had there been other gods besides Allah, they both would have been destroyed. In Islam, one of Allah's names is Al-Qahar, the one that overpowers. He doesn't answer to anything or anyone and his will is imposing. The biggest proof that there is only one God is the fact that there is balance in the universe. The laws of physics are consistent, the sky is always blue, and gravity is always the same. I don't know about that. Why not? Well, the sky's not always blue. Yeah, if the earth blows up, it's not always blue, right? Well, when the sun comes up, it's red and pastel. Yeah. But it's, it's red and pastel every time the sun comes up. Not necessarily. Sometimes yep. it's blue. 
If the conditions are the same, it is, I guess. Well, yeah. <laughs> but that, that was I'm just point. throwing a little... It was a bad example. Yeah, and he had another one with the steering wheels. If you have equal power on both sides, you would just go straight. Yeah. You wouldn't have to overpower one to the other. It was a false dichotomy. It's it? just definitely a bad one. Bad. He needs a better solution. At this point, you might believe in God, but have a problem following organized religion. I mean, why should you be restricted to a specific way of life, right? But if you really think about it, you already are living your life in a specific way according to the laws of your country. Imagine if your country had no law. Life would be terrifying and everyone would be so lost. This shows us that we need direction. Not only that, but every country has slightly different laws that are constantly changing over time, which also shows us that we as humans cannot decide what is 100% right or wrong. Yeah, that's a big, I, I so if we need direction, entirely. but cannot decide what is objectively <laughs> right or wrong, we have a problem. Where do we get the right direction from? <clears throat> the creator. This is a lot. Imagine if I gave you a car and you'd never seen one before. Guessing what to put in the fuel tank and what buttons to press is not good enough, but referring to the instruction manual provided by the manufacturer, we will know exactly how to drive the car. In the exact same way, if I want to know why am I here, where am I going, what is my purpose, I must refer to the revelation provided by the creator. How? The answer is the Qur'an. We've all heard about Moses splitting the sea, and Jesus being born a miraculous birth, but these miracles are all limited to the time and place in which they happen. The Qur'an, on the other hand, is a special miracle that was given to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and is not limited to time or place. It is a miracle that me and you can pick up, study, and experience anywhere, anytime. You can never prove that the splitting of the sea actually took place, but the Qur'an can be proved to be from God. It is a book like no other book, a speech like no other speech, and this can be shown in so many ways. For example, Allah predicted its preservation from the beginning. More than 1,400 years have passed, and the Qur'an remains in its original language completely unchanged. Since Muslims claim the Qur'an is the direct word of God, any changes, even if it was a single letter, would instantly falsify this claim. Allah challenges the reader to look for contradictions if they think the Qur'an is man-made. What we find is that the message is 100% consistent with absolutely no contradictions. Allah also told us that he would make the Qur'an easy to learn. Today, millions of people around the world have the Qur'an stored in memory. Every single generation since the Qur'an was revealed has had memorizers, making it the only book in history to have passed down in both human memory and written form. If all books were to just disappear, the only one that would be back in a day is the Qur'an. Amazingly, Allah told us that when people listen to the Qur'an being recited, they are impacted and you see them start to cry. Thanks to YouTube, we can see this happening with our own eyes. You see people who aren't even Muslim and don't even understand the language breaking down into tears. Even those who recite occasionally cry. What other speech can do this? <laughs> Linguistically speaking, the Qur'an remains the best Arabic literature to date. Since Arabic is arguably the most eloquent language to ever exist, this makes the Qur'an the most eloquent speech in the most eloquent language in history. The language of the Qur'an alone is enough to prove that it could not have come from man. To add to this, the Qur'an is also jam-packed full of scientific and historical accuracies that were impossible to have been known 14 centuries ago. From the Big Bang, to the expansion of the universe, and to every living thing being made from water. 
from the two seas that meet but don't mix to the accurate description of the human embryo. In fact, there are more than 1,000 scientific verses in the book, and not a single one of them can be disproved by established science. For those who are spiritual, it magnifies our spirituality. For those who are intellectual, it challenges our rationality. And the Qur'an, by far, is the most popular book in the world that is read billions of times every single day, week in, week out, all year round. For these reasons, Muslims can proudly claim that the Qur'an is self-evident to be entirely from God. If you are still skeptical, pick up a Qur'an and read it for yourself. Imagine an African child that lived 12 years in poverty and then died of starvation. Now compare this boy to a 70 year old drug dealer that had all the money, all the cars and everything he wanted and then he also died of old age. One lived a short, miserable and difficult life and the other lived in luxury whilst causing harm to society. Now they are simply a collection of bones six feet under the ground. If there was no life after death, how unfair and depressing would that be? The world is full of injustice. People get away with so much evil and innocents get blamed for things they didn't do. Simply just believing in the day of judgment is belief in ultimate justice and accountability. It breathes hope and optimism into every struggling heart. In Islam, the events of the afterlife are described in such graphic detail no other religion describes it with such conviction, and Allah calls the Day of Judgment in the Qur'an the ultimate reality. Muslims live to do good in preparation for death. Isn't this a powerful motivator? <laughs> Throughout history, Allah has sent prophets like Abraham, Moses and Jesus to bring people back to the worship of one God. In Islam, the final prophet sent to humanity was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. What's interesting is that the way Muslims have preserved his life is above and beyond any other type of preservation in history. You can't just make up stories about him. Narrations must be supported by the chain of narrators that goes all the way back to his time. The narration and narrators are then tested against strict criteria to verify that the narration can be trusted. Depending on the tests, the narration is then graded with a level of authenticity. Anything you read about the Prophet must have a grade or else it is completely ignored. If the grade is substantially weak, Muslims instantly reject the narration. So to deny that he existed is like denying all history. Saying that, his life is so well documented because of the impact he had on his people. We know things like how he used to eat and even the position he used to sleep. It wouldn't be far from accurate to say that we know more about him than any other historical figure. All of this information literally invites us to study his life and make a rational decision to see if he was actually a prophet or not. There are three possibilities for this claim. Either he was lying, or he was mad, or he was telling the truth. Let's break this down. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I mean, received the, the first word, revelation from God at the age of 40. Mad. This means he lived a completely normal life for 40 years before becoming a prophet. In these 40 years, he built a reputation in his community and they literally nicknamed him the truthful and the trustworthy. He was known to have never told a single lie. Think about it, 40 years of sincerity and then to suddenly come up with a monumental lie like being a prophet doesn't make any logical sense. Later in his life, as people started joining Islam, 
the leaders were getting more frustrated. They offered him anything he wanted just so that he stopped preaching. If there was any time to show that he was lying, this was it. Remember, a liar always lies for a reason, but he rejected. Doesn't this show sincerity? The prophet was also known to have so much wisdom and his character was impeccable. People used to race to serve him in any way they could. Muslims and non-Muslims turned to him for advice and he never said no to any request. These are not qualities of someone that is mad. Perhaps the biggest proof for me is that the prophet could not read or write, had no educational background, yet was able to bring forth the Quran that remains the best literature the world has seen even after 1400 years. Logically, this is enough to verify his prophethood. The Quran has literally shaken the world. The Prophet also told many prophecies that made no sense at the time and have only recently materialized. Listen to this. He said that the poor Arabs of the deserts would compete in building tall buildings. Well, <clears throat> what? Back that up there. Wait a minute. This is before Islam? No, this is 1991. Yeah, okay, so... So there, there's a... There was a... There's an authentic narration that the prophets said that the Arabs in the desert... Would compete. ...in the future would compete to build the tallest buildings in the world. And that is the tallest building now. <clears throat> I think it still is. I think it is. Yeah. This one in Dubai? Right, so... If if yeah, if not, it's one of the top five. I'm sure, probably. I think there's a new. I think there's a new one, maybe in Ch in China being built now. There's somewhere, I heard of a new one being built that's maybe even taller. Hmm. But yeah, that's like one of the prophecies. It's, it's, it is a pretty wild one. Amazing to think that people who are looking for an oasis that to go between. I mean, I've, I've had, I I hiked the Grand Canyon, and I know what it's like to have to look for water. Yeah, <laughs> right. And you, I can see you're probably going to be looking for some water in Dubai. Right, and then <laughs> to go in that environment and create some of the tallest buildings in the world is unlikely. It seems unlikely. Hmm. But, And, I mean, the reason is oil, right? Well, yeah, it brought the money to the region for sure. Right, and, and at that time, um, in the time of the prophet, I didn't know there was... Oil. <laughs> he said that interest will spread such that no one can escape the dust of it. <laughs> that's that's real. Interest or interest. He said that power and authority will be given to the wrong people. Trump, oh, how are they going to do Trump like oh, that? Oh, no. He said that sexual <laughs> promiscuity would become rampant and that parents would give birth to their masters. Hmm. These are only just a few examples from a plethora of <clears throat> authentically graded prophecies. Amazingly, his greatness is globally recognized even by non-Muslims. For example, Michael Hart, who wrote the famous book of the top 100 most influential people in history, and he places the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as number one in his list. Other examples include Dr. Keith Moore, George Bernard Shaw, Gandhi, Thomas Carlyle, Lamartine, and the list goes on and on. Can't we logically and rationally say that he was telling the truth? See, the message of Islam is very simple. It is to direct all inward and outward acts of worship to Allah and Allah alone. Worship isn't just to pray. Worship is to obey and to love and to rely upon Allah more than anything or anyone else. It means to break free from society's expectations of you and to fully submit to the expectations of the Creator. In other words, 
You don't act a certain way or dress a certain way to please certain people. Everything you do is for the sake of Allah. This is true liberation if you ask me. There is no leap of faith in Islam. Allah has given us an intellect, countless signs and a lifetime to search for him. If after this video you now believe that there is only one God and that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was his final prophet, you have found the truth and I would like to personally invite you to Islam. There you go. Thanks. Have you found the truth, Dad? <laughs> I think I knew the truth long ago. That's the... About Islam? Well, that there's one God. I mean, he just... <clears throat> I've struggled with this my whole life. Yeah. <clears throat> pretty, pretty good video. Like, some of his... Some of his... I want to go back to the car thing. I want to kind of think that out. Because what's his point? His point is that... His point is two that there, drivers. there can't be two gods because you'd be pulled in two different directions, I think is what he said. Right, which, I mean, the car thing, where is it? The car thing kind of makes sense because if you had two drivers... They would oppose each other. Yeah, like, where is it? Where is the Go back to the, where the car is running. Um, there you go. But then nothing can... No, okay, before it's before that. It's just before that. No, I think it's after, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you have two drivers, okay. So the point is that there can't be two gods because they God is all powerful, and so whatever God wills will happen. So if you, it's like if you have two drivers, and one wants to go left and one wants to go right, yeah, you go straight, but that's ultimately not the will of either driver. So it's almost chaos. <clears throat> Right. See what I mean? So. <clears throat> Chaos and destruction. Right. Because neither one of them are looking where they're supposed to go. Right. They're like looking over here, looking over there, and then they go straight and crash. Right. We're no. turning. No, you're not. <clears throat> Wait. Yeah. I get it. Okay. All right. Yeah, pretty good video. The editing quality is crazy, huh? All the fancy, flashy transitions and sounds. <laughs> Kind of cool. <laughs> I, I, he did well. Yeah. That's, that's I don't know. If, I don't know if he makes the that's the editing by himself or he maybe has a team. But it's it is impressive. Uh, he made a strong argument. Mm, good. One that I wish a lot of my friends would see. Yeah, but you can post it. Post post that video on your Facebook. I dare you. Five <laughs> bucks. Really? Yeah. You give me five. Yeah. Five. Five. I'll bot. do it for seven fifty. All right. Oh. Deal. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this video I watched this a long time ago, and it was, it. I learned. I remember I learned a lot watching this. It's kind of funny to look back. It's all like kind of seemed like basic stuff to me now, but when I watched, right. it, I was like, "Whoa, man! I didn't know that." <laughs> no one told me. Yeah. Yeah. The part about um, where it says that everyone that heard Muhammad had to agree and. I mean, they even through the years. It's, the hadith. Yeah, he was yeah. talking about. He's talking about hadith there. Really? Yeah. All the. No, 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 no. I was talking about when he was writing the book. Oh, the Quran. Right. Yeah, yeah. The the how it was uh, passed down orally and also through text. And if it was memorized. And if it was destroyed, it'd be the first book rewritten. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's true. That was in. I think I. So I learned. And the, it wouldn't even miss a word. I learned the other day that. That um, one of the names of Allah is the protector, which in Arabic is like Hafiz, I think, something similar to the word. And I haven't confirmed this yet, but I think that when you memorize the Quran, you're called a Hafiz, Hafiz. And I think that means protector, because pro by memorizing it, you're protecting it. Right. If something ever happened that it's destroyed, or the, uh, everyone else that, that memorized the Quran is destroyed, mm -hmm. killed, you memorized it, so you can bring it back just by memory. That might ensure your safety on, on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, don't know. it's a big deal. There's a, and there's a lot of people, there's so many people that have memorized this. It's crazy. I, I, we watched that one video six months ago, and the, you know, he said, 
It was a dude from Texas, and he said, if I even said one word wrong, people will yeah. correct me. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. You used yeah. to best this. Yeah. Yeah. Used... yeah, it's true. And, like, it's, I mean, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to memorize either. Like, it is easy, but it's complicated. It's, well, it's very detailed. It's extremely detailed. It's, like, more detailed than, like, normal Arabic, I think, because there, there's these different rules that make it almost, like, uh, musical. Mm. Yeah, and so it's it's a little bit more intricate than like even standard Arabic, and it's also like very old language. So to be able to memorize it is a, is a big feat. And there's a ton of people that right. do it. There's a ton of people. I think I told you before when I was in Medina, I was sitting next to a father and a kid, and I don't know, maybe they're from Turkey or something like that. And this kid is probably eight years old, this eight-year-old boy, and he's sitting there without a book, just sitting there, just doing Quran, reciting. just reciting it, just going off, 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 and I'd sit there, and I'd listen, it'd be three, four minutes would go by, and his dad would eh, correct the word, <laughs> and then he'd start over, and uh, not all the way over, but he'd you know, start that sentence over or whatever. And fix it. And, and fix it, and then keep going, and then, yeah, another few minutes would go by, and then he'd say, ah, actually, it's, it's like this, and then, okay, go back and fix it. Wow. Amazing. No book in front of me. No book. No wow. book. His dad had the book. <laughs> His dad had the book. But, but he, he was sitting there, no book, just wow. pure memory. Yeah. <clears throat> I was eight years old. And you think I was harsh on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's intense, man. Yeah, that's some training. It's a lot of hours. But that kid will be able to recite it in no time, right? He's probably half ease by now. He's probably memorized by now. Really? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. May Allah bless all of you generously for watching this video with us. And inshallah, we will see you all in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I smell this one too. This one's awesome. Dude, don't overwhelm my nose. Get that away. Go! Oh! <laughs> wow, that's like cat piss, dude. <laughs> Did you jar cat piss? <laughs> that's ammonia. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that oh man, that burnt <laughs> my left knot. <laughs> that'll, that'll wake you up. Huh? Oh man, Shoot. that's like a smelling salt. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs>